Anyone who owns a new Samsung TV has probably noticed a feature called Smart Calibration in the picture menu. It is carried out independently using a Samsung or Apple smartphone. Does it mean that everyone now can calibrate their own TV? Let's check! Today we will look into the performance of this feature on QN85B, S90C and QN92C TVs in cooperation with Galaxy S23 and S24 Ultra and iPhone 13 and 15 Pro. We will verify the results of this automatic calibration with the best measuring equipment on the market with a total value of more than $25,000 and give a clear answer whether this is a breakthrough or just a marketing gimmick. Are you interested? Then sit comfortably in front of your TV and let's get started! I'm assuming that many among my viewers are not big technology enthusiasts and have not yet encountered the concept of calibration. So let me give you a brief introduction. If you, dear viewer, know exactly what it's all about and are only interested in the results, then you can confidently skip to the next section of the video. TV calibration is the process of adjusting TV parameters of the TV using specialized equipment to get the highest quality picture and reproduce what the director saw in the studio during film or television post-production. Many people who hear this definition ask, which director? Every director, the answer might be. Because as long as television exists, there are also international standards to which studio displays are calibrated so that the colors agree on every set, in every country and on every continent. Of course, every film artist perceives the world differently, just as every painter in history had his own style. Therefore, calibration doesn't make everything we watch look the same. The idea is to faithfully reproduce what the film crew wanted to convey. The founder of the Professional Video Alliance once said the following sentence. What kind of tinted glasses do you wear when you go to a picture exhibition or a movie theater? The question sounds silly enough, of course, and it's about nothing more than the picture modes that manufacturers load into TV sets. They are just like such glasses which are put in order to change the appearance of what actually was in front of the camera. And the most bizarre thing is that when we turn on our new TV set, it runs by default in a mode that extremely distorts colors. To some extent, this is the result of EU regulations that force lower power consumption, but in the main, it's a deliberate act by the manufacturer. The idea behind that is this. A TV in a storefront is supposed to dazzle the viewer with brightness and oversaturated colors in order to stand out and draw attention to itself. This also answers the second most common question. Why, when paying so much for a TV, do I still need to calibrate it? Well, it's because no matter how much money we invest in our screen, it's always just a coarse factory adjustment because the vast majority of the market doesn't expect natural cinematic picture. Nobody likes to wait until the end of the video for an answer, so we'll start with the results. In every combination tested, the auto calibration unfortunately degraded the image quality compared to the factory filmmaker mode, which is supposed to reproduce colors faithfully. If we compare it to the factory standard mode, it seems to be a move in the right direction, but the whole process can be easily replaced with a few clicks with the remote control, switching to a different mode. It often gives better results than auto calibration, which proves the complete pointlessness of this feature. The result depends on both the model of Samsung TV and the phone that is used in the process. However, we tested as many as six combinations and in none of them the result turned out well, therefore I advise against this function. If someone has already used it, then I suggest restoring the default image settings and returning to filmmaker mode. Let's now discuss the results in detail. The first thing that may be surprising is the lack of results after using the iPhone 15 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Unfortunately, despite repeated attempts, I was unable to invoke this function in the SmartThings app. In my opinion, the devices are simply too new and support has not yet been added, because in the exact SAM TV configuration, both the Galaxy S23 and the iPhone 13 worked right away. The conclusion is that in some seemingly top hardware configurations, we won't be able to use smart calibration at all. The second issue is the scope of settings that are carried out with this function. Either a basic version is available, which takes tens of seconds, or an extended version that lasts a few minutes. Most TVs only have access to basic calibration, and this includes the latest and greatest QD OLED TVs. Why did the manufacturer restricted the capabilities of its flagship models? I don't know, but I'm guessing it might be related to the problem of measuring very deep OLED blacks with the built-in camera. The basic calibration procedure is limited to changing only three sliders in the menu, adjusting the basic white balance. 
In other words, it aims to restore the natural hue of the image without any color dominant. Once the process is complete, these parameters are uploaded into the movie mode, which earns the proud nickname Calibrated. As a person who specializes in this subject, I strongly disagree that such a basic adjustment should be signed with such a name. Let's discuss this using the example of the S90C, the detail measurement of which you see now on the screen. The errors that any calibrator will pick up are as follows. A huge peak in gamma in the lower dynamic range, which results in the loss of much detail in the blacks. We also have significant gamut oversaturation in the red area, which reproduces colors incorrectly. A slightly yellowed white balance with a delta E of 3 is the least problematic error. The process of basic calibration with the smartphone, on the other hand, does not affect any of the two main problems. It only adjusts the white shade. But let's put this philosophy aside and consider whether the calibration contributed to anything positive. No. It only pushed the error up to around 5 when using the iPhone and up to 12 when using the S23. The latter value produces a huge green tint of the image, as you can see now in the photo simulating such characteristics. In the case of QN85B, the situation is similar. Here, in the factory film and filmmaker modes, the color errors are noticeably higher. Calibrating with an iPhone amplifies them further. In this scenario, using the Galaxy S23 gives better results than the Apple-branded smartphone, but no better than the factory filmmaker mode. The shade of the image is no more yellowish, but there is a deficit of the green component, which means it has a pink tint. The Delta E error is similar, so we are in no better position, just at different end of the scale. You can now see the results of such a change on the screen. Let's now analyze the test on the Samsung QN92C. In the case of this TV, as well as other representatives of the Neo QLED Mini LED family, an extended version of calibration is available. Before we start, we can choose which parameters we want to choose in order to calibrate our display. I wouldn't say this is an intuitive process for a home user, because the program uses expert names such as BT1886 or allows us to manually select the size of the test pattern. However, the default parameters look reasonable for calibration for SDR content, so we will use them. The process takes noticeably longer and the app presents us with the results when finished. It's difficult to interpret the diagrams showing the white balance or the gamut, as it's not clear how they are scaled. But the delta E and gamma errors graphs suggest that the program has achieved very good results. A user might therefore think that everything went according to the plan. The reality is, unfortunately, different as the measurement made with professional equipment shows. The white balance is completely smashed after calibration with both the Galaxy S23 and the iPhone 13, with the latter being much worse around the blacks. The program has introduced extreme parameter values in this area, which leads not only to incorrect color, but also increases posterization. Both phones didn't do their job well in regards to the color gamut. Not only didn't they remove the imperfections, but also made them worse. In the measurements, we see errors of delta E as high as 13. This is a huge difference from the value of 1 or 2 that the report in SmartThings showed. The most ironic, however, is that this particular QN92 was very decent in the factory filmmaker mode. The white setting was almost exemplary. There were no major gamma problems and the adjustment would have only been welcome in the color gamut as the colors were slightly oversaturated. Yet I must stress that this only applies to our unit. Each TV is different, especially if there is a longer gap in production date. Therefore, calibration is always done on a specific unit of the displays and duplicating the parameters from another simply doesn't make sense. In this scenario, we see the failure of smart calibration function. Let's look at it this way. The customer gets a unit like ours, where color reproduction is not farmed for perfection. Then he attempts to get the best out of the device and decides to use the built-in function after which he gets completely ruined out color reproduction and at the same time a report in the app that says that everything is okay and this is how it's supposed to be. Why is this happening and, above all, where the discrepancies between phones and individual TVs come from? There are a few problems. First of all, analyzing the graphs and choosing the optimal calibration method requires a lot of knowledge, which is not too easy to encapsulate in the algorithms of built-in functions. For this reason, 
Any automated calibration mostly either doesn't work properly or involves a lot of compromises as we saw in today's tests. For comparison, I am now inserting graphs from a professionally calibrated S90C. As you can see, both black detail problems and imperfections related to color reproduction have been removed. The second reason for the failure of the system is the design of the cameras. Take a look at this experiment. On both screens, we set a perfect D65 white point, which is confirmed by the spectrometer measurement. Now we take a picture with a smartphone. A perfectly built camera should show the same shades of white on both TVs. Here, however, the effect is that one TV is greenish and the other pink. Creating color filters for a camera that would mimic our eyesight perfectly is very complicated. Even the super expensive Klein k a colorimeter, which works much like a camera, doesn't measure accurately without using a spectrometer. This is probably why the smartphone calibration process often completely ruins white balance settings. Summing up all the knowledge we have accumulated in this episode, I will say this. The smart calibration function definitely has nothing to do with professional calibration and in all our test scenarios it resulted in a worse picture. We got a better result using the factory filmmaker mode without any additional treatments. However, there are many models of phones as well as TVs that it can work with and there is results can vary greatly. There will never be certainty whether the change that has taken place is for the better or for the worse. Because even in the latter case, the SmartThings app shows us a report saying that the results are good. Of course, we can experiment with the function and compare the image based on our own taste. If by doing this, we get out of the default factory mode, which has nothing to do with a good picture, that would be a step in the right direction. However, if we want the real calibration effect, that is, the image as the director saw it, without stretches and distortion, then specialized equipment and a lot of knowledge are required. Using home methods alone, it would be best to simply turn on filmmaker mode and then set the brightness and motion interpolation according to our taste. More details will be covered in the next video. See you there!